All that hard work you've been doing, it's about to pay off. The most famous one. That's what Danish Dhanakshatra is, and that's what this new moon cycle is about. How do you turn raw materials into material wealth? How do you transmute talents into fame? These are the questions of Danish Dhanakshatra. This is a nakshatra that is actually about material manifestation. So all of this work that we've been doing internally, now we're moving it into the external world, into the tangible world. To understand this nakshatra better, it's smarter to start with the one before it, Shravana. Now, Shravana is the path walker, and the words to describe the nakshatra are the experienced perceiver needs to inquire to establish a path. The symbol of it is an ear, and the purpose of it is receptivity. So this is how it looks for somebody who's on a spiritual path. Before you're on your path, you are living in the material world. When you come onto the path, you begin to experience the divine. You begin to experience communication with other dimensions, with ancestors, with nature, through your dreams. But there comes this language and it's something that you need to learn. And so Shravana is about learning that language. And it's about the discomfort in learning that language, but being entirely receptive to that language. Shravana is ruled by the moon, and so it is a very internal energy. The deity is Vishnu, and Vishnu is the essence which pervades all things. Because Vishnu is in all things, the essence of Vishnu pervades all things. So in learning this other language, in being entirely receptive to otherworldly communications, we begin to understand and communicate with the essence of all things. And thus in Shravana, you learn the interconnectedness of all things. The Shakti, the energy, is providing connection. So from above, we're impelled to see the connection among all things, and then below, on the earth, by seeing all things, we begin to see the path. And thus, we have to listen clearly to be able to discern the path. When we learn to listen clearly, and by listen, I mean, you're watching something happen and your bias is no longer there because you have right understanding. So you understand what it is that you're seeing without the attachment to what you want to see getting in the way. So you're becoming a pure vessel for receptivity. And developing this ability includes creating situations or situations being presented to us that allow us to practice and refine this skill. It's driven by Artha, this very goal-oriented, purpose-driven energy that seeks to understand because we want to achieve something. We want to, at a deep level, understand the nature of our own pursuits and the meaning of our own experiences and how these things are connected and where they are going. And by developing this language of otherworldly communication, being able to interpret our dreams, we come to develop a level of awareness that allows us the consciousness to see and really understand how all things are connected. So countries aren't just countries. All of a sudden, it's a system of countries. A dynamic is not just a dynamic, it is a system of dynamics. We see how a person, a family, a community, a group, a nation, we see how everything moves together. And even with nature, it's not that something is good or bad, it's not about assigning value to something, it's right or wrong, you just begin to see how they move together. And in so doing, you begin to see the interconnectedness of things and you begin to understand how touching of one thing affects something else. And then you begin to see how your life and your experiences contribute to that. And what you do in the world also contribute to the dynamic of the way things move. The next step of this is looking at yourself and understanding your own experiences and your own talents and putting those things together and seeing then the creature that you are the being that you are, and how the system of you contributes to the outer world. That's Shravana. Now we move into Dhanishta. Desirable objects 
need tangible resources to become wealth. The symbols of Dinishta are a flute and a drum. And the purpose is because these are instruments themselves, but these instruments, they serve as the medium between the musician and the music. The musician has the talents, the tangible object is the flute, and the result, the fame, comes from the music. The drum, Shiva, beats on the drum. It's a two-sided drum. One side is our divine nature, the other side is our ego. So Shiva beats on the drum equally to dissolve our ego and to enhance our divine nature. The deva of the Nishta are the Vasus, the gods of all abundance, the personification of pure energy, light incarnated. So you have the elements here of light, being a vessel of light, and also the elements, the elements being all of the things that you need to build something. The Shakti of Dinishta is the power to give abundance and fame. And what we've gained from Shravana, from developing our receptivity, from developing our awareness, is, is the loss of self-consciousness. So when something comes through you, you understand it is not coming from you, it is coming through you. Your job was to be the clean vessel for it to come through. And also that your actions become different. And this is the purpose of why I do these videos. It's because the rational worldly action is not the same as the intuitive guided action. And what you begin to learn in Shravana and then expressed in Dinishta is that the intuitive guiding action, the intuitive guidance driven action, right action takes the place of rational worldly action. So while Shravana was internal and ruled by the moon, Danishta is external and ruled by Mars. So we are going from internal reflection, but not just in that sort of mushy sense, we're coming from internal reflection that we have tested over and over. So when we get our guidance, when we get these signs, we don't just go off them, we test them. We see how often they are accurate. We see how we get our messages. We see where, where we receive them. Through which medium, when do they come, what time of the day do they come, do they have a physical effect on our body, what is our process, because everybody receives them differently. So by the time you get to Danishta, you're gathering your resources, and now you see the interconnectedness of what's around you and deciding how you're going to act, that you are indeed going to act based on right action, right awareness, which brings us to now where we take inventory of what our talents are. What is it that we have? Because remember, we have all the resources, we have all of the elements available to us. So what is it that we have now, which can be transmuted into material abundance and fame? Now fame, Marilyn Monroe was the Dinishta native, so fame is something that definitely can happen from it. But fame is also the honor of having walked your path in the way you were supposed to do it because not everybody will become really famous and wealthy. That will be based on a lot of external circumstances and everybody's path is different. Everybody's soul growth is different. So while the nakshatra is based on material abundance, what this could also be is you being the most successful that you can be in your life. And that comes from doing the best that you can with what you have available to you. And those are things available to you through other people. Those are things that you've cultivated on your own. And those are talents and abilities that come to be a unique contribution that you can make to the world because they are lessons. They're things that you know, you know, and you can put them together in a certain way that nobody else can do because they haven't walked your path and they don't step into the world with your perspective. And that is what Danishta is about. A word about where the energy is situated in the houses. Most of the energy is 8th house moving into ninth house. And then Mars and Uranus are in the 11th house. So this is about going deep, really understanding 8th house, ninth house, what you are taking into the world, how you are bringing that into physical manifestation in terms of how you operationalize higher ideals. And then 11th house, how you bring that to a larger audience how you bring that out in the world. 
The three main nakshatras where all of the planets are are Shravana, the internal, Dhanishta, doing something with the external, and then Bharani, which actually means giving birth to something. Okay, and here are the aspects of the chart. Sun conjunct moon. So that internal receptivity that we have come to cultivate now becomes the external expression. All the ridicule, all the rejection, all the risk, all of the interpersonal disasters that you faced, all of the clearing that you've had to do, all of the difficult decisions you've had to make because you've decided to walk this path. Now, you're like the high priestess, the energy of the moon, but the mature energy of the moon, where you don't feel a certain way about it, you just understand that this is the wisdom you have decided to take on in this life. And then the sun, you now have the confidence to fully express it. Venus, conjunct Jupiter. So it's the Empress and the Wheel of Fortune. The Empress is different than the High Priestess. The High Priestess is exclusively about receiving knowledge and being a clean vessel. The Empress is about bringing into the material world all of the knowledge that you have received and all of the information that you have been receptive to. So this is your creative energy. In this new moon chart, Venus is what you are attracted to. It's what you've decided to take on. In the last chart, Venus was conjunct Pluto. So you were cleaning out what you were attracted to. You were making a decision what you wanted to attract in your life, what you have in your life. Now, now that you've done that, now that you've cleaned that out and become clear on what it is that you want, what you're going for, and what you will have in your life and what you'll tolerate in your life, because you know what you are trying to create, thus what needs to be there and what doesn't need to be there, conjunct Jupiter. Whatever you've decided on, more is coming. So that's why you were asked to clean it out, because Jupiter is neutral. It will just bring you more of what you've decided. Saturn square Uranus. The death card, the Saturn card, is about spiritual transformation. So Saturn is our limitations. Shravana Nakshatra is, of course, part of Capricorn. Capricorn ruled by Saturn. And so when you are developing your gifts and when you are honing your receptivity and learning that otherworldly language and becoming that very clear vessel, you do so in a structured way. Uranus is otherworldly. So now your structure becomes otherworldly. Saturn is about limitations. It's about being confined in a certain way. Uranus is about breaking out of those limitations. So whatever it was that confined you before, your container is something different now. Mars in Aries, the devil, transformation, stepping off the cliff. Stepping into the new reality, the tower, and everything will change. In keeping with the theme of the video, this is a card. It was an intuitive pull that got pulled for the video. Whatever you've been working on and whatever you've been working toward, this is justice. You're getting what's coming to you. Whatever you've been working toward, Wherever you have focused your attention, this is Libra, it's coming. Um, things will even out, it's coming for you. So as we move into the readings, this is the card of Mercury Retrograde. Actually, it's the Magician in reverse, but we'll just hold it up like this. So it's the Magician. You see the Magician has everything he needs on the table in front of him. He's got all the instruments. He's got everything he needs. You've got everything you need but we're in a retrograde just now. So now is the time to reassess what you have. And here's what happens. While we've been going through our transformation, our worlds are different. Our livelihoods are likely different. Friends are different. Your family relationships are different. The work that you do in the world is different. Sometimes, on a, usually on a spiritual path, um, your world will get transformed. It's like one tower after another, after another, after another. And in the course of that time, what happens is that the skills that you start out at, that you started out with and the idea that you started out with, 
the skills that you started out with, you had a particular path in mind. And so you use those to walk toward that path. You begin your life, you begin your livelihood, you begin your training, your academic training, your work training, because you have a worldly goal in mind. Then when you get on your spiritual path, that worldly goal is likely interrupted in many ways. So your friends are probably different, your place of living is probably different, the work that you do, different. The skills that you have, maybe you're not able to employ them. So everything is different than when you started out. But here's what happens. Along the time that you were trying to do one thing, you developed a lot of other skills. You met a lot of other people. You developed a lot of other abilities. So what's on your table now is different than what was on your table a year ago and is way different than what was on your table two years ago or three years ago. So here is the present moment. And the focus of this new moon is to reassess what you have. Just lay it out on the table. Not what you thought you had, what you have now. Reorganize them, rearrange them. When you have them set out on the table, walk around the table. So this is what the time is about. To take inventory of what you have now, reorganize, rearrange them, and see what you have See what elements you have available to you. And then the next step is you see what you can do with them to transmute them into something tangible. But before you're able to transmute them into something tangible, the first step is you have to see what you have. And again, I stress, it's probably different than what you started out with. So you likely are in a far stronger position than you imagine you are. Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This new moon energy takes place in your fourth house. And your fourth house has to do with how you feel at home. How you feel at home in the world, how you feel at home in your community, but like how you feel at home, how you relax, who you relax around. So, and looking at what's on your table. What resources do you have available? Remember the goal is to create some tangible effort which will result hopefully in material gain. So you have a look at your resources. What have the past few years been teaching you? What conversations are you comfortable in? What conversations are you not comfortable in? As in like, where do you feel at home? Who are your people? Fourth house typically has to do with family, roots, place of origin, but that's not where we feel at home. So that could be where you're experiencing it, or this could be a paradigm shift where you're looking at a very different way about how to feel at home someplace and what makes you feel at home someplace. This could be things like physical space. The rooms are set up in a way that we have a bedroom, we have a kitchen, we have a living room, but somebody designed a house like this. This is not how all, this is not how all houses are designed. So how the physical space is arranged and how that contributes to what life you want to live. Not everybody likes a television. Not everybody needs a dining room table. So what your life used to be like or what your life was supposed to be like, your physical space is typically oriented toward that. But is your physical space now oriented in a way that makes you feel comfortable? And in the same way, the people, the activities, the traditions that we do, which are typical home things, family things, place of origin things, do those make you feel comfortable? Do those make you feel at home? And the people you are engaging with, do they contribute equally to the relationship? So what you are putting in, is that what they are putting in? If people benefit from being in your presence, but you don't benefit from being in theirs, that's not an equal exchange. And again, benefits can come in many different ways. But I'm talking about, do you feel loved? Do you feel supported? What you walk into a situation with is that reciprocated to you? Is it any type of equitable exchange? And do you feel at home in situations that are not equitable exchanges? These are very different things to talk about. So again, what's on your table, your physical space, who's around you, where you think you come from, where you think you belong. There are many different ways to experience these things, express these things, shift ideas, 
on how to experience, perceive, live these things. And so this full moon energy is asking you to think about your experiences and where you've come from, what you know now, what's around you now, and with the things, the people, the knowledge, the perspective, the guidance, all of the things that you have available to you now, how can those be arranged in a way that you can create some tangible effort to take out into the world that will be useful to other people and that will also yield you some material success? Keeping with the imagery of the last few videos, you've come from the woods. You've come from this dark forest. You've come from this dark place of energies, people, circumstances that were doing their best to drag you down. And you needed to escape that. So you're out of the woods. Now, the last full moon, you just step into a clearing and you see the clearing in front of you. And you see the room that you have to create something. And the step that it's time for now, the step that we skipped, whatever you escaped with on your back, whatever you survived with, whatever is on your table. You've come out of the woods, you have the clearing in front of you. Now is the time to rest, to reorient, to re-energize, to reorganize. See what you have, take inventory of your talents, of the elements available to you. What can you do? It's not necessarily the time to put them in motion. New moons are for internal reflection. They're dark moons. They're time to go inward. They are time to rest. And after what you've been through, one of the great lessons that you learn is it isn't your brain that guides you. It's the energy of your heart that guides you. And what you've been through, your heart needs to rest. What happens to your body under stress? 20 minutes of a high stress situation releases cortisol into your body, puts you in flight or fight mode, and stresses your body to such an extent that it requires three days for your body to recover from that 20 minutes of high stress. So think about your last year. Think about your last few years. If you're one of these people who has an issue with taking time to rest, is why I cite the evidence for you, but you can't begin to do your work until you're rested. And with all the release that's been happening in the past few weeks, you may have felt a sense of exhaustion. You may have been sleeping quite a lot more. And if you're feeling this exhaustion, your body is working so hard. Your physical body is working so hard. And it's important to take care of the body because the body is the vessel. Remember, Danishta is the incarnation of pure light. That's what we're doing here. That's why we rest. That's why we take care of ourselves. You can't be that pure vessel of divine light if you're exhausted. So now, rest, reorganize, rethink, see what you have available to you. That's what this new moon is about. The last part, cards came out for a guided message. Inner Earth, you'll survive this. New solutions and new beginnings. Endings are so difficult for us because it's what we knew. Not because it was good, not because we liked it, not because that was the best thing for us, we felt like the best thing for us, because it's what we were familiar with and now it's gone. So the ideas that we had, the direction we felt like we were supposed to go, the thing that we thought we were supposed to achieve, that goes away. And then you're staring into the abyss. Then you're staring, like right now we're staring into the clearing. But it feels like you're staring into the abyss because everything you thought you were supposed to do, you weren't. It's, it was, you were, but it was for a different purpose. It wasn't that thing. It was the learning that took you on that path. So where you are right now, what happens is it feels like a loss. It feels like the, the thing that you had, that vision that you had, that thing that you were working toward, that it was for nothing, but it wasn't for nothing. You gained so much knowledge in it. You gained so much experience in it. You learned what to keep. You learned what to release, what to let go of, what to walk away from. You learned what is going to guide you on your path, what's going to help you get where you're trying to go 
And you also saw, because you learn this so well, when you're not useful to people, you understand how they value you. Especially when you don't seem to be materially prosperous, you really see what people value. And you really see how people value you. Those are the things that you learn. And you'll get through this. Because what happens with those endings is how much we've learned. So the new beginnings that we have available to us, we take that knowledge and we do something better with it. So now the people that come into our lives, we can evaluate them differently. We can evaluate how we feel in their presence. We can evaluate how they see us. Do they see us? Are they supposed to be there? And with the people who are supposed to be there, that's the promise. These are the new beginnings. This puts you in a stronger place than you ever could have been if you were still holding on to those ideas of what you thought was supposed to be. Star bathing, light body, crystal grid, transmission, activation. I don't know which of you this is for, but this is what we're doing now. Was that a good thing to have in your life? Should you keep on with these people? Now it's a different conversation. You're talking about being a vessel of light. How does what you have in your life serve that end, serve that purpose, serve your mission? For people who aren't focused on self-development, they don't understand you. Just using the language of self-development, this is not a self-help kind of a thing. What we're doing is being our best to, to create conditions within our physical self to be a vessel for divine work. Your life is a canvas. Artist, manifestation, creative accountability. I grew up in a Christian faith and they said, make everything you do a devotion. And I didn't understand what that meant. But now, in terms of what the path is, in terms of what daily activities contribute to what I'm doing, to what I'm supposed to be doing, to what I know I'm supposed to be doing. My day is a canvas. In light of what you are supposed to be doing, in light of who you know you are, in light of the path you're walking, Starkeeper, Cosmic Ancestor, Seed the Light by Keeping Grounded. So in the meantime, as you are creating conditions that make your vessel ideal for cosmic energy to flow through you. What do you do in the meantime? Keep the light. Canvas. Every day is a canvas. Every day you continue to cultivate and create that beauty and embody that light. Remember who you are and what you're doing and that everything you have been doing contributes to everything you will be doing.